There is a time for everything, and of course, there's lots of time that should be for praising God. Na bless ba kayo to hear? Napapatunayan natin, mabuti ang Diyos, napakabait niya. Kahit maraming mga frustration tayo sa buhay, kung tutuusin, mas marami pa rin yung dapat ipagpasalamat. All the time. So, hindi dapat tinitingnan yung mga konti-konti na yan. These sorrows are just tiny dots in an otherwise endless happy line. Masaya pa rin ang buhay kahit marami tayong hindi natutupad ng pangarap, kahit marami tayong pinoproblema. Sabi po sa Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There is a time to sleep and there is a time not to sleep. Wala na yan doon sa verse. E dinagdag ko po yan. Baka nagahanap pa kayo kung anong verse yan ang ginagamit ko. There is a time to sleep and a time not to sleep. At yan po ang ating pag-aaral ngayon. Do not sleep when... Dot, dot, dot. Mga dapat na hindi panahon ng pagtulog. Panginoong Diyos, turuan niyo po kami. Continue to comfort our hearts. And continue to let us enjoy your goodness and your fellowship. Continue to let us see the wonderful things you do in our lives. And as we ponder your words, O oh God, we pray that you will be our speaker. And that as you speak, you will set us free from boxes that imprison us, from mindsets that are very discouraging. Set us free, O oh God, from the prisons that we ourselves make around ourselves. And set us free from those that were made by others outside of us. Panginoon, pagpalaan niyo po ang iyong mga anak. Narito kaming lahat dahil gusto namin kayong makaniig. Gusto namin kayong makapanayam. Gusto namin kayong ma-enjoy, O God. At nawa nag enjoy din kayo sa aming presence. That through our praises, through our thanksgiving, through hearts that are grateful, you may be worshipped. So reside in our hearts, O God. Descend from your throne of power. Go down into our hearts, our and lift us up to where you are. At ang aming dalangin, Panginoon, yung pong agenda nyo para sa amin ngayon matupad. We know, O God, that you are the reason why we're here, and you have a plan for us. So we ask you now, let your plan take over. Let your agenda prevail, and let your wisdom be our light. Speak to us. We don't want anybody to speak to us, O God, except you. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, give us hearts that understand. Hearts that discern and hearts that obey. We seek you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Do not sleep when... And we're going to discuss eight times when we should not sleep. One, do not sleep when you have an unconfessed sin. When we say sleep, we mean literal sleep or we mean poetic sleep, meaning to be contented and to be restful and to be unmindful and to be careless, and to be happy when you should not be happy. So, do not sleep when you have an unconfessed sin. In fact, Ephesians 4.26 says, Do not let the sun go down where you are still angry. So, huwag abutan ng paglubog ng araw, pagkagalit pa tayo, sapagat matutulog ka ng may kasalanan. Mahirap yung natutulog ng may kasalanan. Pag namamatay kayo, nakasimangot. Mabuting namamatay ng nakangiti. At napakaganda po nung hindi tayo nagdadala sa pagtulog ng mga kasalanan. Lahat yon binibigyan natin sa Panginoon. Kaya huwag tinutulugan. It's important to confess our sins and to make right. Kung may kasalanan tayo sa tao, kasambahay, humingi tayo ng tawad. Kung malayo, may telepono, tawagan, email, beep, whatever. At kung meron namang nagkasala sa atin, patawarin natin sila. Huwag nating dalin sa pagtulog yung mga kakulangan ng pagpapatawad. Either we are not forgiven or we do not forgive. Both of them are not good to bring to sleep. Kaya kailangan naglilinis tayo bago natutulog. Kaya maganda po bago antukin, magpray na. Mahirap yung kung kailang kayo antok na antok na tsaka kayo mag-uumbis na magpray because it becomes the longest prayer, ang amen sa umaga na. Pagkisi niya ay umaga na pala, amen. Dahil nakatulugan na yung prayer. Huwag nagpe-pray lang nakahiga sapagat nakakatulugan. At maganda yung pagkatapos yung halimbawang kumain, pagkatapos medyo mag-ayos-ayos ng konti, bago gawin yung mga last things that you do at night, pray. When you still have the time and the energy and the zest to do it. 
Napaka-importante. An unconfessed sin is not carried in your heart through the night. Psalm 32 verses 2 to 5. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Napakaganda ng mga sinasabi dito nung gumawa ng psalm. Nung aking uh, iniingat-ingatan na aking mga kasalanan, nung aking pinagtatakpan-takpan, ay sobrang aking pangihina. Napakabigat ng inyong kamay sa akin na para akong idinidiin pa baba. Sabi, nangihina ako na para bagang sa tagaraw. Alam nyo dito sa Israel, pagka tagaraw, ang ihip ng hangin, parang yung blower ng buhok. Ganong kainit. Sabi, ganun na lang ang panghihina at panglulumo ko. Pero, nung tinanggap ko ang aking mga pagkakasala at ipinihingi ko ng tawa at hindi ko pinagtakpan, hindi ako nag-rationalize, hindi ko ginastify ang sarili ko, pinatawad mo ako. Huwag kayong matutulog ng may dalang kasalanan. At lalong huwag kayong matutulog ng may katabing kasalanan. Mahirap yan. Yun lang ang daladala. Tapos katabi nyo pa. Mahirap yung ganyan mga bagay. At huwag kayong matutulog ng may sama ng loob. Pero sasabihin nyo, ano magagawa ko? Napakaraming nakakasama ng loob. Wala kayong magagawa sa pinanggagalingan ng sama ng loob. Pero may magagawa kayo sa pinupuntahan nun at yun ang inyong puso. You cannot control people. You cannot control events. But you can control what your heart will keep inside it. So you just refuse. You vehemently refuse to carry this thing in your heart through the night. In other words, magpatawad. Ang pinaka makapangyarihang tao ay yung tao ang nagpapatawad. Sapagat it's only in forgiving that we become victorious. Even those who take vengeance and who succeed up to a point only become slaves of their passions and slaves of their anger and slaves of all the things that, ne- that are negative and that eat them up. But those that forgive are free. Gusto nyo makalaya kayo sa memory ng mga taong nakakainis, mga taong nagkamali sa inyo. The only way to be free is not to kill them, not to get rid of them, but to forgive them. Then you are free. Huwag magdadala ng sama ng loob sa gabi. Huwag magdadala ng kasalanan. When else? Do not sleep when there is a storm because of your sin or error. Katulad ni Jonah. Matapos yung takasan ng Diyos, sumakay siya sa barko. Yung buong barko, siniklot-siklot ng alon at bagyo. Itinapon na ng mga tao ang kanilang mga kargamentos. Samantalang kaya nga sila nagbabiyahe sa barko ay para magnegosyo, para mamili, mag-buy and sell. Itinapon na lahat sa dagat, lulubog pa rin ang barko. At ang lahat ay nagkakaguglo na sa pananalangin sa kanikanyang mga Diyos-Diyosan. At anong nangyari yung kapitan nung bumaba doon sa may ilalim ng barko, nakita niya si Jonah kung sino pa naman ang dahilan kung bakit gano'n ang nangyayari sa buong bagyo na yon ay tulog na tulog. At sabi niya sa Jonah 1.6, the captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Sabi, kaya mo pang matulog. Nagkapeste-peste na ang buhay naming lahat. Nagkagulo-gulo na ang lahat. Nakakaya mo pang matulog. Masamang matulog pag may bagyo kung kayo ang dahilan ng bagyo. Ngayon, kung ibang dahilan, para tayong si Jesus, natutulog may bagyo dahil tayo secure kay Lord. Pero huwag naman kayong over-secure na kayo na pala yung dahilan kaya may bagyo, tulog pa ng tulog. In other words, If we're going to allow the poetry to be applied in our daily life, huwag kayong matahimik kung may nililikha kayong gulo. Kailangan ayusin nyo yun. Kailangan putuli ng paglikha ng gulo and make right with every party that was grieved or wronged. And you begin with God. That's why when Jonah prayed to God and he asked that he be thrown overboard, the whole storm stopped. 
Baka naman kaya may storm ang buhay nyo, itulog na tulog pa kayo, nagmamaang-maangang kayo na meron kayong nilikhang gulo. O kaya nagmamaang-maangan tayo na tayo participant to a crime. Or that we are responsible. And for that storm to stop, we've got to wake up. And in this case, probably not a physical waking up from physical sleep. But to wake up and realize our responsibilities, our answerability for the wrong that we do. Do not sleep when there is a storm, especially in other people's lives because of you. Misan may gagawin tayong kamalian, ang daming taong nadamay, nagkagulo-gulo yung buhay nila. Wala tayong karapatang magpahinga. Dapat nating ayusin yun. Una, itigil ang paggawa ng mali. Restitute. Pay for the errors that you have done. Seek people's forgiveness. Do not sleep when there is a storm because of your sin. Third, do not sleep when you should be working. Duty. Napakahalaga po nang meron tayong sense of responsibility. Hindi ko mo may lagnat ka, exempted ka na sa duty. Hindi ko mo masama ang pakiramdam mo, ay exempted ka na sa duty. Hindi ko mo nalulungkot ka o nadedepress, ay exempted ka na sa duty. Duty is duty no matter what. Unless you are in a life-threatening situation, you should perform your duties. Many people, they think that they can get off the hook by telling you a nice story. Kung may assignment sa school, ikukwento sa teacher kasi kung nag-brown out, bumaha. Okay, maganda, nakakaiyak ang kwento, pero wala pa rin yung assignment. Mayroong mga Sunday school teacher o Bible study teacher, they have a duty to teach. Song leaders that should lead. Pagkatapos, they will not show up, but they will tell you a nice story, a sad one. Nice story, but you still did not deliver. We don't want stories. We want goods. So you deliver. Do not sleep when you should be working. Sleep is one of the best gifts after work. Not before and not during. Don't sleep on the job. When you have a job to do, do it well. Give your best. When you don't give your best, nothing good will come out. And if you always do your best, the worst won't happen. Napakahalaga yung sense of duty. One of the greatest signs of respectability is the sense of duty. But ka nandyan, ayoko ngayon, wala ako sa mood, nag-break up kami ng girlfriend ko, ng boyfriend ko, uh, wala akong kapera-pera ngayon, medyo masama ang pakiramdam ko, pero narito ako kasi may tungkulin ako eh. It's one sign of civility, of respectability. When else do we not sleep? And I want you to think hard about this, number four. Do not sleep. When a poor person's needs or provisions are with you. Sa Deuteronomy 24, 12 to 13. If the man is poor, do not go to sleep with his pledge in your possession. Return his cloak to him by sunset so that he may sleep in it. Then he will thank you and it will be regarded as a righteous act in the sight of the Lord. Your God. Ano yung background? Ang mga mahihirap na tao, pagka humihiram ng pera o pagkain sa mga may kaya, nagbibigay ng prenda. At yung talagang hirap na hirap, wala nang maiprenda, kundi yung sarili niya lang yung balabal. Ipeprenda niya yung balabal niya para lang ipakita ang magbabayad din ako. Pero anong sabi ng Deuteronomy? Alam niyo po ba ang mga batas ng isang bayan ang nagpapakita kung gano'n sila kasibilisado? Sabi ng Deuteronomy, kung mahirap talaga yung nangutang sa iyo at iniwan sa iyo yung balabal bilang prenda, huwag kang matutulog nang nasa sa iyo ang kanyang balabal. Bakit? Habang natutulog at humihimbing siya namamaloktot sa ginaw, how can you sleep? Something that you don't need anyway. You just want it to be there as an extra precaution na mababayaran ka when somebody is suffering. Mga kapatid, huwag kayong matutulog nang meron kayong pinagkakaitan ng kabutihan. Kumisan, meron tayong kapatid, pinsan, malalapit na kamag-anak, may mga sakit, walang mga gamot, walang pambili, 
Paano natin makakayang matulog, magpahinga, mag-relax, magbakasyon nang hindi natin sila tinutulungan? Yung kailangan-kailangan na nila ngayong araw na to ipinagkakait natin dahil inire-reserva natin sa inyong pangangailangan sa year 2024. Sabi, if a man is poor, do not go to sleep with his pledge in your possession. Alam niyo ba, kung minsan ang nakikita ko ipineprenda ng mga tao, nakakaawa. Mga manging isda, ipineprenda ang bangka. At may mga mayayaman naman, ang daming bangka na nakaparada doon sa kanyang likod. Hindi naman niya inaano yung bangka. So, yung mga tao tuloy, hindi makapangisda. Mga mudistang ipineprenda ang makina. Hindi sila makapagtrabaho. Sabi, titingnan naman ninyo kung anong tinatanggap ninyo at huwag niyo inilalagay dyan. Hindi niyo naman kailangan yan. At kahit kailangan nyo, mas kailangan nila. Aanin natin ang Bible study. Sabihin nyo sa akin. Aanin natin ang praise and worship. Kung meron tayong ginigipit na mga mahihirap. Aanin nyo ang relihiyon. Aanin nyo ang Diyos. Kung meron kang ginigipit na taong mahirap. Pero sasabihin mo, ako rin mahirap. Pwes, mas mahirap. Kesa sayo mas kawawa, mas mahina. Bali, wala. Huwag na kayo magsayang ng oras. Hindi yan natatanggap ng Diyos. Sabi ni Lord, religion that is acceptable to God is to visit those in prison, to help the widows and the orphans, those who are suffering. Bali, wala ang alam nyo lahat ng mga verses. Kung nasisikmura ninyong pagkaitan ang nangangailangan. So do not sleep if a poor person's needs are with you. Number five, do not sleep when you have become a debtor's guarantor. Ito naman talaga. Kaka-nervyos. At talagang mahirap matulog. Siguro kahit hindi kayo sabihan, hindi na nga kayo makakatulog. Proverbs 6, 1-5 My son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, If you have struck your hands in pledge for another, if you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to free yourself since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of a hunter, like a bird from the snare of a fowler. So, anong sinasabi dito? Kung kayo ay nag-garantee sa utang ng may utang, gumawa kayo ng paraan para makawala kayo sa garantee na yan. Either bayaran nyo yung utang, o basta huwag gawin kayo dapat paraan. Sapagkat nakakatanggal ng sleep, yung garantor ka, ng utang ng iba. Sa katunayan, maraming sinasabi sa book of Proverbs na hindi tayo dapat mag sa utang ng may utang. You know why? Because you are not God. You don't hold the future. How can you be a guarantor when you also can become a victim of tomorrow? Ang sinasabi sa Proverbs, huwag kayo mag-garantor. Ang linaw-linaw nun, ang dami-daming ganong katuruan. Kaya sabi, when you strike your hand in pledge, it is a ceremony saying, o sige, pag hindi niya nabayaran, ako magbabayad. At gano'ng karami na magkaibigan na nagkasira. Gano'n ng buhay ang nawasa ka marami na nag ng utang, ng may utang. Tapos na one, two, three. Tinakbuhan o kaya hindi nagawa ng may utang ang kanyang duty. So yung guarantor ngayon, ang hindi nakatulog. Kaya sabi, Allow no sleep to your eyes. Gawan mo yan ng paraan. Sabi kung papano isang gazelle o isang maliit na usa no? ay nagwawala mula sa bisig ng humuhuli sa kanya. Kung papano ang isang ibon na hinuli ay nagkakakampay para siya makawala, ganun ang gawin mo. Get yourself free from this entanglement because it will cause you a lot of sorrow. Siguro marami sa inyo biglang nagsisi, nag kayo, no? Well, hindi pa huli ang lahat. Huwag na kayo mag-garantor uli. 
Hindi ko yan sariling turo. I'm only echoing to you what the Bible said. You know, wisdom collected over the ages, revealed by God and blessed by God, should be very handy in our daily life. It took generations to make this simple generalization that you should not be a guarantor. Ang daming luha ang tumulo bago na-realize yung katotohanan at yung sentence na yun. Kaya dapat tayo mag-benefit. When else do you not sleep? Do not sleep when in the church or the fellowship. O silipin nyo katabi nyo. Medyo pahilig-hilig na ng upo. Dapat nga wala mga sandala na mga silya eh. Sa fellowship. Do not sleep at Bible study. Definitely do not sleep at worship. Acts 20 verse 9. A very interesting story. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Nakita nyo yung worshiper na matay. Palibasa, nasa third floor sila. Si Paul naman, sermon ng sermon, sermon ng sermon, nakatulog. Eh, nakaupo sa bintana. Nagulat ang lahat. Blag! Dungawan ng lahat. Patay. Apat na kandilang nagbabantay. So, don't fall dead during the worship. Don't fall asleep during the worship. I mean, it's rude. Because the Lord is in attendance. Because the Lord is being worshipped. Diyos, tutulog-tulugan nyo lang, parang nakakahiya. Pero sasabihin nyo, eh, paano naman, puyat ako. Di gumawa ka ng paraan, huwag ka magpuyat. O kung galing ka sa night duty, do something, but be polite to the Lord. Be polite when the word of the Lord is being discussed. Be polite when there is prayer being addressed to the Lord. Don't fall asleep. So, which brings us to the seventh. Don't sleep when at prayer. When you should be praying, when you should be watching, do not be like the apostles of the Lord. Sa Gethsemane, sa niya magbantay-bantay kayo dyan, tulungan niyo ako manalangin, ito'y terribling gabi, gabi ng mga gabi, climax of our career, etc., etc. Tapos yung mga tao, tulog. Siguro maraming nakain sa Lord's Supper. Mga inantok. Kaya sa Matthew 26.40, then he, meaning the Lord, returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. In Matthew 26, 43 to 45, when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So, hindi dapat tinutulugan ng pagdarasal. Hindi tinutulugan ng mga dapat pinaglalamayan. At may mga bagay na dapat pinaglalamayan sa buhay. And finally, number eight. Do not sleep when you have not yet enshrined God in His right place. Hanggang hindi na idadamba na ang Panginoong Yesus, hindi siya na ilalagay sa dapat niyang kalagyan, hindi dapat matulog. And it means hindi physical sleep. Hindi dapat masyadong maging kampante at kontento. Psalm 132, verses 4 up to 5, sabi ni David, I will allow no sleep to my eyes, no slumber to my eyelids, till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the Mighty One of Jacob. So niya, hindi ako matutulog, hindi ako magpapahinga, hindi ako magre-relax hanggang hindi ko na ilalagay ang Panginoon sa kanyang dapat kalagyan. A dwelling place, a temple, a tabernacle, a tent, whatever. Anong application yan sa ating buhay? Mga kaibigan, huwag kayong matulog at magkaroon ng peace sa buhay kung hindi nyo pa na ilalagay si Lord sa dapat niyang kalagyan, which is your heart. Because if the Lord is not in your heart and you die without Him, then you have to go to eternity without Him and you know what it means. But when you die with your heart for the Lord and with the Lord in your heart, then that the Lord, that Lord in your heart will never leave you throughout eternity. In fact, He will take you where He is. 
So huwag mag-relax kung hindi pa natatanggap si Jesus bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Dahil kung wala ka pang tagapagligtas at bigla kang namatay, lagot ka. Simpleng-simple. So how can people enjoy life when any moment their life could be snuffed out and they have no Savior? Walang magbabayad ng kasalanan nila. Walang sumagot sa kanilang kasalanan. E di sila yung mananagot. At hindi tayo dapat sobrang mag-relax habang si Lord wala pa sa kanyang tamang lugar which is also the hearts of our loved ones. The hearts of the people we know and the hearts of the people we don't know. In other words, while we can enjoy life on a daily basis and have fun and have happiness and enjoy many things that God gives us, do not find total rest until you have really worked and done your best to place God in His sanctuary. And that is the hearts of people. Na kailangan siya ay ma-i-enthrone sa buhay ng mga tao. Hindi sobrang enjoy na tayo sa mga maliliit nating accomplishments. Eh, ang dami-dami pang tao ang hindi saved. Huwag na nating ilayo. You start na lang with your Jerusalem, your own family. Huwag kayong masyado mag-relax kung marami pang walang salvation. Wala pa si Lord sa kanila. Eh, kung bawian ang buhay yan ngayon, bukas, paano? Hindi pwede magpa-tumpik-tumpik na, o sige, next month, next week, o sa Pasko, sinisyarang ko rin ang lola ko, pupuntahan ko rin siya. Sinong may sasabing makakarating pa siya ng Pasko? Anong malay natin? O kaya nakarating siya, pero kayo hindi. So, paano yun? Jesus must be enshrined in people's hearts. And every... Christian, worth the blood of Jesus that was shed for him or her, must not find rest until Jesus is in his sanctuary, in the hearts of people. So, there is a time to sleep. Thank God there's a time to sleep. But there is a time not to sleep. Be awake and do what must be done. Do not let misplaced sleep rob you of your duties. Huwag tayong masyado mag-relax. Maraming dapat gawin. While we enjoy pockets of rest and relaxation, we must never forget that this whole life must be dedicated to and focused on the battle that is set before us. And the amazing thing about Christianity is, while you are doing God's battles, you may be weary but you have rest inside of you. Maaring pagod ang katawan, pero payapa ang loob. And I tell you this, wala nang hihigit pa na mabuting bagay to enjoy, kundi yung payapa ang kalooban. Dapat tahimik ang kalooban. Dapat payapa. Kahit pagod ang katawan. Mabuti nga yung pagod ang katawan eh, mas sumasarap ang tulog. Yun nga hindi mga makatulog, yung tulog kasi ng tulog. Tapos naman problema, wala nang itulog. Pero yung mga pagod, it's a great gift. At ang taong tulog, hindi nagkakasala. Yun nga hindi mga makatulog ang umiimbento ng mga kasalanan. Kasi hindi makatulog. Gumagawa ng mga activities. It's important. Do not love sleep. Sabi sa Proverbs 20.13, Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. And we're not talking only about physical sleep and physical food. Spiritually, emotionally, be alert, be awake, do your duties, do what must be done, and you will have an abundant life. Not only materially, but more importantly, spiritually. Bow before the Lord and ponder these eight points. Is any one of these eight applicable in your life? Meron bang mga puntos na dapat tayong magbantay na hindi pala natin dapat tulugan, hindi natin dapat ignorin kasi mahalaga? Be alone with the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit do His work and teach us how to make applications to our lives. Be alone with God for a while. Let Him finish the message. <music> 